hi guys welcome and welcome back to the channel if this is your first time being here thank you so much for stopping by thank you for clicking on this video today i'm gonna show you how you could design um this rhinestone shirt now i did this using an svg file that i got on creative fabrica and this is a beginner's friendly tutorial if you want to um, understand how to change an SVG file into a rhinestone template, then this is the video for you. Now, this is very beautiful. I used um, crystal stones and purple velvet stones to do this project. Let me tell you, this is so easy to do. Even a beginner, beginner, beginner can do it. So let's get into the video. Okay, guys, we are in Silhouette Studio. The first thing I'm going to do, I want you to go where it says File. Then you're going to go down to Merge. And then you're going to search for the file that we're going to use. In this case, I am going to use a file, an SVG file that says Live, Love, Inspire. When the file comes in, it's going to come in separate, okay? It's not going to be grouped together. So what I'm going to do in order to um, size it, I'm going to select everything. So when you're selecting everything, ensure that the dash line goes over. This dash line right here goes over all the image. And then I'm going to pull it to how large I want it to be. Since this is a 10 by 10 or a, a relatively squared image, I'm going to go for about 10 and a half. 10.799 high and 10.908. Um, 10.799 wide and 10.9 um, high. When you determine your height, I need you to understand also that the bigger you go, the more rhinestones that you will need to use, okay? When you do this, this is a very simple project to do and it's very beginners friendly because if you notice, there's a lot of space between the letters. So you will not have to think about um, I'll have to um, make insets or offsets in order to create space for the rhinestones to fit in. But you could just go ahead and create this into a rhinestone template as it is right now. Now, to do this template, what I want to do, because I don't want to use a lot of stones. If you notice, I have my rhinestone panel open because I was working with something else earlier. But because I don't want to use a lot of stones, I am going to um, make the top and the bottom one in um, just an edge. And then the word love, I'm going to make it bold. Now, what you're going to do, you're going to ensure that you have 10 SS stones selected if that's the stone that you're using. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to click on the first word which is live and i'm going to press the edge now when you press the edge this is what it is going to look like but it looks nice already however i want my stones to be closer to each other so you're going to go down here where it says spacing and you are going to change that spacing to a 0 0.15 if that is the look that you're going for. And I think it looks absolutely beautiful when the stones are closer together. Now, I do not want these stones to be right here because if you remember, there was a little hole. If you look, there's a little hole in each of the letters, but I don't want the stones to be here. So I'm gonna show you how you could remove those stones. The next thing I want to do, the word inspire, I'm going to use it also as an edge. I'm gonna put an edge around it. And what you'll notice is that it's 
automatically defaulted to a 0 0.15, which is perfect and it's okay for me. The, and what is so wonderful about this is that I don't have to go ahead and um, make any insets or offsets. And this looks beautiful already. The next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to collect, select my word love and I'm going to go over here where you'll have the radial and the linear fill. The linear fill is this one right here, where it's good for words that are basically um, our lines. So because my text, my text is so rounded. If you look at it, it's rounded. It's not, it's not um, a line. It's more rounded. The best fill to use in this case is the radial fill. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click on the radial fill. And if you look at this, you see how it forms the letters. It curves the letters beautifully. Now that you have this, it's just what we need to do is just to clean it up a bit so that it looks better. And we will take away stones that do not belong. So what I need you to do, I need you to... Um, what I want to do, this one, Inspire, I'm going to change it to the same color as this one here. Okay? So, let me undo that. Let me undo it. All right, let me not change it. Let me change it to black because I want it to show up very well. I'm going to change it to black. No, not that one. I want to change the Inspire to black. Go back. So the word Inspire, I'm going to change it to a different color. I'm going to change it to black. And the word Live, I'm also going to change it to black because i want you to see what i'm doing and the word love i'm going to change it to a brighter color red okay now what i'm going to do i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to select the whole thing i know that the whole thing is selected because i see that dashed line all around it and then I'm gonna release the rhinestones. Okay, so when you release the rhinestones, you see that there's a box around each of them. It means that they are released. So now what we can do, we could move around stones, we could add stones, and we could um, put stones where stones um, are needed. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna click off, and I'm gonna zoom up. So we don't need this. So I'm going to close this one now because I don't need it for right now. And what I want to do, I'm going to take away these stones right here. Okay. I'm going to delete these stones. I don't think they're needed right there at all. So all of these stones. I'm going to delete them. I just click on one, press my shift key, click on the other one, click on the other one, and then delete. Okay, so I'm going to delete this one, I'm going to delete this one, and this one. And then I'm just going to move over this one so that it fills up the space a little bit. Okay, so we are basically finished with the live. Then we're going to work with the inspire. I'm going to do the same thing, take away all the stones that I do not need. Okay, and that looks good. The only thing we'll have to work on is the love because you see that there are a few spaces it's not bad at all. Trust me, I've seen worse. Um, that needs rhinestones. So what I'm going to do, 
I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select some of the red stones and I'm going to press Control copy, Control V and paste them. See, I like doing it this way because um, I don't have to be copying and pasting um, stones every minute so that um, it takes a lot of time. So what I do, I just go ahead and I put stones where they're needed and I like to zoom up as far as I can so that I know that my stones are not touching. Okay. So these spaces, these spaces just add stones there to make it look better. You can move your stones out and fill up spaces where you think they're needed. So I'm going to do that. So like here, I could move these stones a little bit out. So that it gives me room for this one right here and then these ones now i could move them a little bit to fill up those gaps you understand so you don't want it to look all shabby you want it to look nice okay so see okay right here i don't think i can fit a stone so what I'm going to do, I'm going to see if I could move over the stones so that it doesn't look anyway. Okay, that looks better. I'm going to bring this down a little bit. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and move over stones, add stones where it's necessary, and then I'll show you what to do next. Okay guys, so I went ahead and I moved around the stones. I added stones where they're supposed to go and this is what I came up with. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to zoom up before I do anything and we're going to check to see that the stones are okay. They're not touching each other. I like my stones to be close to each other because I believe the closer the stones are, the more the bling shows and it's much beautiful that way or it's more beautiful that way so this is what we have and it looks pretty pretty fine to me what i'm gonna do i'm gonna zoom down and what i'm going to do now is i am going to group the layers together so i'm gonna go over here where it says edit I'm going to select by color. Now, when you select by color, you're gonna go to the by fill section and you'll notice because you have two different colors on your mat, a black and a red, they'll, it will come up as a black and a red. So what you need to do is I'm gonna select all the black stones and I am going to go up here where it says object and I'm going to group those together. After I do that, I am going to go ahead and I'm going to group the red layers together or the red together. I'm going to go up here. I click on the red. I go up here and I press object and I press group. Okay. Now when you have grouped it, you're ready to turn it or make it into a compound path. So I'm going to click on the black and I'm going to go up here where it says object and I'm going to go down to make a compound path and I'm gonna click on it now when you make it into a compound path the color will go away but what you need to do is zoom up just to check to see that there are no bright red stones if you see bright red stones it means that 
they they are two stones on top of each other and you will have to fix that before you cut out your flock because if you go ahead and cut out your flock then you're gonna have some giant holes in your flock and you do not want that so it looks okay to me so what i'm going to do i'm gonna go back here and i'm gonna put back my color to be black and i'm gonna take that red line off i'm gonna take that red line off now i'm gonna do the same thing for the red I'm going to go up here and I'm going to make a compound path. When I make it a compound path, the color will go away. I'm going to zoom it up. You see how close my stones are? Even though they look close, they are not touching. And that's what you want. I don't like when I see a lot of space. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> In my template. So I tend to just obsess. So this is what you're going to have. It looks okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back over here and I'm going to put back the color. When I put back the color, I'm going to go beside it and take the line off. Now, this is ready. So let me zoom down just to see that everything is okay. And it does look okay to me. Everything looks fine and dandy so what i'm gonna do i am going to group everything now together so i'm gonna select the whole thing ensure that 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 ensure that that dash line is over all your words and then you're gonna go up here where it says object and you are going to group it after you group it you're going to make take note of your size so the size that i'm working with is a width of 10.925 and a height of 11.036 you're going to make a note of that size now you're going to save it as an svg file to save it as an SVG file, you're going to go up here where it says File. You're going to select Save Selection, save it to your hard drive. So I'm going to save it to my Silhouette Designs. And I'm going to save it as Live, Love, Inspire. Fire. Okay, and I'm gonna save it as an SVG file and I'm gonna press OK. Okay, so now it is all saved to your design. Now I'm gonna show you how to bring it into Cricut Design Space for you to cut it. Okay, guys, we're in Cricut Design Space. The first thing I'm gonna do, I'm going to upload the SVG file that we did in silhouette studio so i'm gonna go here where it says upload i'm going to go to upload image i'm gonna browse for the image okay so this is the image that we are going that we've gotten i'm gonna press upload now i'm gonna add it to the canvas so guys when it comes in it may not come at the correct size that we had it in Silhouette Studio. So looking at this, it did come in at the correct size. The size that we had, so if you look up here, right here, the size that we had in Silhouette Studio was a 10.927 by 11.036. And it comes in at the exact size. So that is absolutely lovely and perfect now what i am going to do if you didn't know <laughs> there is a flock shortage um so you see the different layers here you see this layer right here the red and this layer right here which is the um black layer so what this is gonna do it's gonna cut on two different mats okay but I am going to actually attach these two layers because I want it to cut on one mat just to save the flock. 
And what I'll do, I'll just use um, tape around the sections that I do not want. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go over here. I'm going to click on it. I'm going to press shift. I'm going to click on the other one and I'm going to attach it. When you attach it, it's going to be one color. So it's going to cut on just one mat. And that's what I want. I don't want to waste all of this flock in the middle. And I just want to cut it out one time. But when I'm layering it, I could do anything that I want basically to it. I could make this a different color. I could make this a different color. And I could make um, inspire a different color. It all depends on you and what you want. You can also, if it bothers you, you could also cut it out as it is now. And then you cut away the love from inside and layer differently. But I'm just going to go ahead and do it one time just to save flock. Because I get to understand that there's a flock shortage. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hit make it. Okay, guys, you don't need to mirror your image. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to press continue and it's going to search for my device. When it searches for my device, I have my dial set to custom. So what I'll do, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to browse for my material. So I made my own cutting setting. I made it Melly Flock. And I'm going to choose that setting. There are persons who use other settings like the heavy cardstock method and it cuts perfect. But this is what I use. I make my own cutting settings. And what I'm going to do. I'm going to load my flock in my Cricut Maker and let it cut out. After I load it and I cut it out, I'm going to show you how what I do to brush in the stones and press the stones on the shirt. Okay, guys, so I went ahead and I cut out my template and I took it off the mat and I ensure that all the holes are out and I put it on a chopping mat. Now this is sort of bigger than the chopping mat that I have. So I'm just going to leave it like this on my cutting board and brush the stones in. Now the stones that I'll be using today, I'm using crystals and purple velvet. Now, you're going to need a painter's brush and a wax, a wax pencil for this project. A painter's brush and a wax pencil. Now, I'm going to brush in the stones right here. I'm gonna brush in the stones in the love right here. I'm gonna use purple velvet. So all you need to do, dump the stones and start brushing in a circular motion.
okay guys so i finished brushed in the stones now i'm going to transfer it using the transfer tape so you're going to ensure that you have enough transfer tape to cover your design This part is very tricky so you have to be very careful and you'll have to commit you'll have to commit you can put it down and take it up or else it's gonna mess up everything so what you do this is new so it's very sticky you're just going to let it down and if you notice here <laughs> It didn't it didn't um, get it so well down there but let's see how we can work with it see I put too much up here and not down here I hope the stones still stick Okay, so I'm going to take it up now. If one stone didn't come up, put it back down. them down again Okay guys, we're ready to put it on our shirt. I'm using a large, heavy cotton gilded shirt. And the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm going to lint roll. Now you have to lint roll the shirt to get off the lint. If you do not do this, then it can prevent your stones from sticking. So lint rolling is important. going to take the moisture out of the shirt and then I'm going to 
find the middle. So now you're going to find the middle. gonna do now what we're gonna do we are going to take our design okay and we're sort of gonna find the middle now you have to be very careful when you're doing this okay I don't want to stress down here too much because it almost didn't catch up <laughs> so I'm gonna take it off and I'm going to ooh, 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 careful I am going to sort of try to get it even I'm gonna try to come down also about three inches from the top and this looks okay looks okay I'll come over a little bit more okay that does not look good at all now I'm going to press this so I'm using a time of 350 degrees and I'm going to press each section because I have a small heat press for um, 15 to 20 minutes. All right, guys, so I finished press pressing it. I'm going to put a parchment paper over for a final press. Ten seconds. <laughs> 